Welcome to the Fresh Start for Life podcast, the show that will help you get out of debt and start living the financial life of your dreams. Now, here's your host, Don Golden. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Fresh Start for Life podcast. I'm Don Golden. On today's episode, we're going to feature an interview I recently did with Blaine Elkers. Blaine is going to share with us some really good information about using the power of our minds to get what we want out of life and to actually live the financial life of our dreams. So let's jump right to the interview. All right. Our first guest is Blaine Elkers. Blaine is a lifetime entrepreneur and has been running profitable businesses for over 25 years. Blaine has owned and operated a consulting firm, a pizza franchise, four health and wellness businesses, a personal development company, and he started two social enterprises to help end malnutrition in a sustainable way using a business model rather than the charity model. His passion is to help people discover their often hidden abilities to live the life they desire, design, and deserve. He recently released the book, Think and Grow Rich, Study Edition. Blaine specializes and results, and is America's chief results officer, a title he has actually trademarked. Blaine, welcome to the show. And I really want to thank you for agreeing to be our first ever guest on the Fresh Start for Life podcast. Hey, Don, thank you so much. And it is my honor and pr- privilege to be on with you. And you know, I've known you for a couple of years, and I've watched you help hundreds, if not thousands of people with their financial situation. And so I think that we are, are both cut from the same service mold and, and I'm excited to do what I can to help serve your listeners. It's going to be great. Thank you, Blaine. Those words mean a lot to me. They really do. I've considered you a good friend for four years and definitely a mentor. I know I wouldn't be where I am with my business without your help and support. So, you know, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. Thanks. One of the things you just raised was uh, one of the things I wanted to start with, and uh, that's your passion for service. And I did not not know this about you, but I'm really intrigued and I want to learn more about the social enterprises that you started to help and malnutrition. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? What what really happened is I've got two kids, my wife and Beth and I've got our son, Bo, and our daughter, Caitlin, and we wanted them to to really kind of make sure they experienced the world. So they ended up uh, going on mission trips with my wife over to Africa and when they came back, they were like, hey, look, we really want to help these people in Africa. And, and so we wanted to do some type of charity work, but we were not very good at charity. But what we were good at is business. And so one of the concepts that we really liked was this idea of, you know, kind of like buy one, give one. Kind of it, most people have heard of Tom's shoes, right? I've got a lot of Tom's shoes. So if I buy a pair of shoes, they give a pair of shoes to someone who is in need of shoes. What my wife came up with was a business a greeting card business it's called Feeding Cards. And when people buy these greeting cards, same price as the store, printed on recycled paper and soy-based ink, but kids get fed. So every time you buy the cards, kids get fed. So if you can bake in the charity component into the business, so we don't have to go out and ask people for money. We just have to get good at selling cards, right? So that idea of baking into the business, that's kind of what we call social enterprise. So I took some classes in that. I I actually got to go to Stanford for two weeks and, and do an entrepreneurial, you know, leadership class, social entrepreneurship class, and really did enjoy that. So now I looked for ways to bake that in to all the businesses that I do or start or invest in. So that's one that's helping to end malnutrition. But then there's another one that is actually working with a food bar. And every time somebody buys this food bar, you know, a child gets nourished. And, and that one, we're up to uh, a few million kids nurse. So it's, wow. it's, a, it's kind of a passion project, but I, I really like, instead of you know charity, if you look back since the 50s, charity giving hasn't really increased that much per capita, right? But when you look at the power business has for social change, I think that's where the key is. And so that's why kind of like uh, you know, Tom's shoes, I'm really uh, into, that, into that business model at the moment. That's really interesting. It reminds me of an episode of Shark Tank I saw I think it's called uh, Bombus Socks. They have a similar similar business model, actually, where they uh, ev- for every pair of socks they sell, they give away a pair of socks to. I believe the charity is uh, is to veterans, actually. Oh, veterans. Nice. No, actually, I think it's homeless people. So they they found that the number one thing that most homeless people want are fresh socks, and so their business model is to sell every, for every pair of socks they sell, they give away a pair of socks to a homeless, and and that was a uh, I forget which, uh, I think it was Damon Johns that actually invested in their business and it's really taken off. So it's, it's interesting to hear more about that and to see that on a 
on a scale that I didn't even know existed, really. That's really interesting. Yeah, and more and more today, businesses are baking that right in, right? So if you're listening to this and you own a business, there's probably a way for you to incorporate some type of social giving or, or social give back to the community. And a lot of businesses do that in a lot of different ways. But to consciously think about it and make it a priority, that's social entrepreneurship. And, and I think that's, uh, that is something that, that's continuing to grow. And I think the marketplace is very accepting of that. Uh, so powerful. One of the things you mentioned is it's, it's a passion project. And, you know, it seems to me that when something is a passion, you know, we tend to get more results. Do you agree with that? Yes, I uh, completely agree. And, and I think that your level of passion for something, that, that level of desire, if it's not high enough, right, the first obstacle, you're going to give up. So passion and, and maybe somewhat ambition along with passion, th- those two things, if they're not present, you can't get any place. That is actually like the first step of the book, Think and Get Rich, right, is to figure out what your desire and your passion is. Yeah, so A Thing and Grow Rich, I, I have a, uh, a deep love affair with that book. I, I was very lucky that I read it in college uh, way back in the early 80s. I read that book in college and it really changed my life. And I got some success because I realized, wait a second, you can think and grow rich, meaning that you can take uh, your thoughts, your desires, what you want, and you can make those thoughts become real in the physical world. And so I had some good success with that. And what happened is I ended up buying one of the, uh, I had enough success to buy one of the original 5,000 copies. Now they claim there's over 100 million copies in print right now, but I got one of the first 5,000. And what was weird is when I opened up that book, the first page was different. And I'm like, whoa, well, wait a second. I went back and I and actually, I still have the paperback that I read back in the 80s. And I realized that there were these, these I call them the lost pages, but there were these instructions given from Napoleon Hill on how, he's the author, on how to read the book. And the first page says what you just said is what do you want most before you read the book? So you want to, it's almost like a textbook on how to, how to turn thoughts into reality, but you got to decide what do you want most? Get laser clarity, laser focus on what you want. And that's the first step. That's the first step to anything. I know here we're going to be talking about, you know, you know, how to have the financial life of your dreams, but what does that look like, right? You've got to get real clear on what that is before you can go after it. That is number one. And that's the number one, you know, that's the number one instruction, almost like pre-instruction to reading Think and Grow Rich. One of the things that you specialize in is helping people get results. So if somebody is thinking that they want to take that step, what advice do you have for them to dig down deep inside them and figure out what their true desires are? Is there a technique that you can, you can tell people to, to use for that? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. There's lots of techniques to to try to uh, unearth kind of the deeper and most powerful desires, right, that you have. And the cool thing about Think Go Rich is once you identify those desires, then the book also helps you amplify those desires and amp up your energy and your faith that you can do it and how to make a plan and how to use other people. So all this great kind of cascading or domino effect of great stuff happens once you kind of unearth that true desire. And, you know, you're going to find out real quickly if that desire has, has real kind of traction is if you're willing to do the action that's going to manifest when you start thinking about achieving what, whatever that is. But to get back to how do you unearth that desire? How do you figure out what you really want? And so there's a couple of different things you can do. One is really to disconnect, get some quiet time. You know, some people like to get out in nature, but kind of get away from it all so that you can have some time to really think, right? Now, maybe it's just for an hour, maybe it's for an afternoon. If you're super lucky, maybe it's a whole weekend where you can get away and start to think about what do you really want? There's a technique called mind dumping. And mind dumping is where you just dump out everything out of your mind onto a piece of paper, right? So the first step to gaining some clarity is to try to get away and then start to mind up all the different things, right? Some are going to be silly. Some are going to be super big. Some you think you never could get. Some will be a little easier. Some will involve other people. But just mind up everything you could want and every one of the little desires, which may even be divinely inspired, you know, onto the paper and just mind up it all. And as you're going through that mind dump, think about all the different areas of your life. You know, what do you want physically for your body? What do you want mentally, emotionally, relationship-wise, financially? You know, where do you want to be financially, right? What are those things that you want? And then once you have that list, then you can start to go through and prioritize the list and really see 
What are things that might be 10 years out, five years out, three years out, one year out? And the things that are one year or less out, those are some of the things that you can start to kind of go to work on. Now, in addition to the mind dump, so it's just kind of getting away, mind dumping, there are other exercises that you can go through to help identify what some of those things that you really truly desire are. So for example, you can do, there's an exercise called your 100th birthday. So you imagine that it's your 100th birthday and you're in still and you're in great shape and there's this big birthday party, right? And all the people you know from your family, all your family's there, everybody from your community is there, everybody from whatever business you were in is there and all these different people from your life, they're all there to celebrate you on your 100th birthday and you're sitting back and one by one people go up and say, you know, I really want to thank you, Don, because you did this for me and you did that for me. And we want to thank Don for this and that. And you get to see in your mind, what are all those things? What kind of relationships do you have? What have you accomplished? What have you done for all those people? And usually service to many leads to greatness. And, and in the end, people, people really do want, want to serve other people. So there's your 100th birthday exercise. That's one. And again, write down those things that people are saying about you and the things you've accomplished. Another one, let's see, I'll, I'll give you three other ones. So, so another one is for you personally, there's this thing called the Powerball. Powerball lottery, right? So we have this exercise where you imagine you won the Powerball. It's $500 million. You're the winner. You got it. And what are you going to do with the $500 million? Well, you're going to pay some taxes, first of all. Then you're going to give all your friends cars and buy your mom a house. And you're going to travel the world. You're going to do all this great stuff. And you're going to give and you're going to have fun and celebrate, take care of all the kids, set up the trust funds. Now it's a year later. You did all that. It's a year later. You still have, let's say you still have $100 million left, right? And it's a year later and you wake up, what are you going to do, right? So, so money's no object. Uh, you have $100 million in the bank. You've done all the party. You've done all the stuff. What would you decide to do then? And that gives you a little bit of a, a peering into some of the deeper desires you have. And typically that people say, well, I would help people blank. And then you realize, okay, that's a big desire is that you want to help people blank. Now, the blank's different for everybody. You know, for me, I want to help people take control of their lives by taking control of themselves, right? I have a company called Self-Fluence. That's, that's kind of the main thing. Help people get results. That's another thing that I'm doing. So that's one. Another one is called the uh, Oprah interview, right? So imagine that it's five years from now and Oprah's asked you to come on her show because you did something great. W what's that great thing? Why is she interviewing you? What, what have you done, right? What have you done? And what would you say in that Oprah interview? And then the last one is a little bit more on the business side. In the business side, we say that, let's say Forbes magazine, it's X years out in the future. Some people do one year, some do three, some do five, some do 10, but you pick a time out in the future. Forbes magazine has come to interview you and they're going to write an article about you. What is the headline of that article? So for you, Don, you know, it, it's, it's five years out and, you know, the Fresh Start program has been a tremendous success you know, what is the headline of that Forbes article? So you start by writing the headline. And then after that, if you, want to, if you want to put more into that exercise, you actually write that article where they talk about the struggles and the obstacles and what you overcame and what you did. And that kind of gives you a little peering in the future. So those are some of the kind of the exercises that, that we use. Again, mind dumping is the backbone of it, getting stuff down on paper. I mean, I've got lists that I mind dumped, you know, 20 years ago. I've got lists for my kids when they mind dump some of their goals. And it's great to come back years later and say, look, look what you did. Look how far you came. Those are a few. Those are great. I can just imagine using the Oprah one. That would be fun. Thinking about an interview with Oprah. That would be entertaining. Yeah. And it could be, you know, uh, you know, it could be an interview of whatever you want, right? It could be a business interview, or maybe you have some other famous person you want to be on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon or, yeah. you know, whatever it is. But yeah, you, you set that up in your mind and you, and you live it out. One of the things, you, you know, I'm a bankruptcy lawyer. You know, I deal with people regularly that are struggling with debt. And one of the things I find is they all have a desire to get out of debt or be out of debt and to live a better financial life. The problem that I find that my clients have is, is that they can't get out of their own head and they cannot see, they can't see that big picture because they're stuck in the day-to-day -day struggle. Does that make sense? Totally. Do you have any ideas or techniques or anything that they could use to kind of get past that day-to-day -day struggle that they're just dealing with, they're dealing with the debt collectors and everything and start thinking a little bit bigger, but also just, I think you have a term for this. Is it called mind trash or something like that? Is that the terminology? Uh, there is this thought of, of something called head trash, head right? Trash. So you have, you have all this head trash. And the problem with the head trash 
goes back to really if I could distill down, you know, decades of personal kind of self development. So, so I was fortunate enough. I made this. I call it a clarifying decision. You know, 24 years ago, I made this clarifying decision when I came home from a business trip. My son gave me the cold shoulder. And I'm like, Beth, why, why is Bo giving me the cold shoulder? She's like, well, he forgot who you were. And that, that just like hit me to the core. And I realized it hit me to the core because when I was a kid, I used to come home to an empty house because both my parents worked. And so that kind of hit me to the core. And that night I made this clarifying decision, which was very powerful to say, I'm going to work from home. It took me a year. But when I made the clarifying decision, which people can make at any time in their life, I stopped looking at all the ways I could work that were not from home, right? So I, I, didn't, I, I knew I had to get out of my current job and then all the other ways I could, I could have a job that worked for somebody else. If it wasn't out of the home, then I wasn't going to do it. That one decision kind of made a whole bunch of other decisions. Anyway, it took me a year and I made it and I, and I got free and I never had to go back to work a job after that. And so for the last you know, 24 years, I've worked from home but what that has given me, and I've worked on all businesses that had no daily operations that I had to do anything for. So I had a lot of time. I did a lot of personal development and I was able to actually take decades of personal development and distill it down to seven words. Each word is a very simple one syllable word. And so the seven word phrase was something that really I learned, you know, like from Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, uh, my mentors, Earl Nightingale, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Dale Carnegie, all, you know, said this in one way or another. This phrase has really helped me through my whole whole life. I actually, I mean, I think you know, Donna, I did a TED talk about this. And that simple phrase is YTABA. And YTABA is an acronym for those seven words. What you think about, you bring about. Let that sink in for a second. So, so what you think about, so for me, that phrase, right, what you think about, you bring about, that's really what made all the difference for me, right? And, and if you look back, I mean, Napoleon Hill says, think and grow rich. Uh, Earl Nightingale says, we become what we think about. You know, uh, the, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? And so you can find all these examples of these, this idea that what you think about, you actually bring about. So it's not just thinking and doing nothing. It's what, what you think about, you bring about. Your thoughts actually create your life and your consistent thoughts, right? What you tell yourself, that's what really makes all the difference. So what are you putting in your head every day? And so to bring this back to what you're saying is that if somebody is stuck in a bad cycle and they're saying, you know, negative things to themselves, right? They're going to just get more and more negatives, right? And so you got to be really careful and it can be, it can sting a little bit, but you know, you you are where you are because of the sum of all your thoughts up until this time. And so it's how you think that makes a difference. Now, I will say, look, life throws a lot of hard stuff. A lot of hard circumstances are gonna be thrown your way. And it's not so much what life throws at you, but more so it's your reaction to what life throws at. It's your response to what happens that kind of makes all the difference, right? And as you begin to study and, and realize how the mind works, it's the meaning that you give things that helps your brain begin to collect information that supports your decision and discards information that doesn't support it, right? So if you say something like, you know, I'm all messed up, my finances are terrible, then the brain's going to go, yeah, yes, they are. And they're going to, and your brain's going to find the different, the find the proof of that, right? Where if you say something like, my finances are improving, well, now your brain's looking for proof of that. And that's kind of called an affirmation, mm -hmm. like you're affirming it. And then there's something that's even more powerful. There's a, a book called The Secret Code of Success where he talks about affirmations, where you put it in the form of a question. Instead of just saying, my finances are improving, you'd say something like, why do I find it so easy to improve my finances? Interesting. Why do I find it so easy to improve my finances? And then your brain starts to give you answers. Well, because I listened to Don's podcast. Well, because I went through Don's Fresh, Fresh Start program, because I'm saving money every day, because I'm not eating out anymore, because I have a budget, because, 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 and it starts this great snowball, you know, up. And so when you realize this, this concept, this I call YTABA, right? What you think about, you bring about. When you realize that, you realize that the most important thing is what are you thinking, right? right. So what, what you're thinking matters. And it matters today, but it also matters yesterday because whatever you were thinking about yesterday is, is what's going to be bringing about today. So you have to 
control your thinking. So this gets all the way back to your initial question, right? Control your thoughts and you control your life. And so now the question is, this is the big question that you started with, is how do you control your thoughts? So let me just start by asking you, Don, that do you have any, any ideas or any thoughts on, on how you, can, you could control your thoughts? For me, it's sort of organic, to be honest with you. I get a thought in my head and a lot of times I immediately become passionate about it. Like this podcast, I'm going to use this as an example. This was something that maybe 60 days ago, I thought maybe someday I would do it. But then something happened. I did a book club call, which I believe you were on that book club call with uh, Mike Michalowicz. Mm -hmm. And I happened to ask Mike, I just, I, I'm a fan of his podcast. So I just asked him about his podcast and he said, everybody should have a podcast. And then right then and there, I said, well, it's not going to be someday. It's going to be now. And I immediately went on the quest to start this podcast. And in 60 days, it's come to fruition. So for me, I find that I get a thought in my head and I get really passionate about it and I just get focused. But one thing that I do find is, is when I write things down, I do better. So the days that I actually write out what the things I want to accomplish I have better days those days, and I, and I do get more done towards my goal. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so let me ask you this follow-up question is, what happens if, if you have a bad thought? You know, you have a, a negative thought, a bad thought, uh, you start to worry about something, you worry about the kids or the family or something or, or your business. Or something. How do you handle the thought control of the bad stuff? Which I think a lot of people in a financial situation, like bankruptcy or something like that, they have a lot of these thoughts. So, right. so what do you do when you get that little, that little thought? I'm going to tell you, this, this is a great bonus I'm getting right here because uh, I, I wasn't expecting a coaching session, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to get it and I appreciate it. You know, I haven't thought about that, Blaine. I just typically act. That's right. what I think I do. But that right there, that is gold. In the book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill talks about removing all worry. And the way you remove all worry is you simply make a decision and take action. And when you start, when you make a decision and then take action, the worry starts to melt away and, and starts to go away. So you, you hit on, on one of the key ones, but for people struggling, you know, with negative thoughts or what we, st we called head trash, I'm going to give you one saying that, that will help people the most. And this is what helped me. And that saying is the solution to pollution is dilution, right? Mm -hmm. So the solution to pollution is dilution. And so what happens is that when you have, you know, you, you have all this head trash, negative thoughts, maybe, maybe negative past and uh, problems personally and financially, you have all this pollution. And the only way to get out of it is to dilute it down. So for example, in my case, I mentioned earlier, one of my mentors is Jim Rohn. I've had rough times in, in my life and even in my financial life. And I used Jim Rohn audio program, program called The Power of Ambition. But I had to listen to that thing 50 times. But for me, audio programs and books like Think and Grow Rich, they can pull me out. That's my dilution. That's how I dilute the bad stuff and the negative stuff. I dilute that stuff out by pouring in the good stuff, pouring in podcasts like this that are going to help you to move forward, right? So the solution to pollution is dilution. So you need to start to dilute down the negative, And the way you do that is you pour in the positive. So that can be audio programs that work for me. Could be books, could be the Bible, could be spiritual type stuff. All of those inputs, spaced repetition of good stuff. That could be uplifting music. You know, Napoleon Hill in the, in the book Think and Grow Rich talks about auto suggestion. First thing in the morning, fill your head with good thoughts. Benjamin Franklin said the same thing. And then at night, right before you go to bed, you know, fill your, your head with, with positive, hopeful thoughts, with a positive expectancy about the future. Another thing Napoleon Hill talked about was this idea of invisible counselors where in his mind, he'd sit at a table with the people that he admired the most through history, and he'd have a conversation with them where they would help solve his problem and help uplift him and help tell him that he could do it, right? So that's, that's another one. One of the other things I like is I, I love technology, and I do have, a, I, I did a TEDx talk about this concept of White Tape and how it helped me after my father passed away. Do you mind if I mention where people could watch that? Oh, definitely not. I, I've watched it, and I love it. I've actually been able to see this in person, this, this talk in person as well. So I definitely want our listeners to be able to listen to this uh, or watch it actually, because it is a video. Yeah, yeah. So I set up a link, uh, Blaine, B-L-A-I-N-E, TEDx.com, right? T-E-D-X.com. 
And so if you go there, you can watch it. But one of the things I teach in there, which has been very successful for me, is the to put the picture of your unlock screen for your phone. Now, now the average person sees that, you know, between 70 and 120 times a day, you're seeing that unlock screen on your phone, right? So you can set that to be any picture you want. Like right now, mine is set to, you know, my current goal, right? Some people have like, Half of it be a picture of their family or something, and then the other half be their goal. But use that unlock screen because that's, again, that's how you dilute the pollution, right? Mm -hmm. Put the positive stuff in. In my phone, I also like to have repeating reminders. So every day at eight o'clock, I have to go into my reminders and there's a little quote that I'm reading and I have to click a little button. So I'm seeing that every single day. Meditation, you know, asking for help, right? That's another way to have control over your thoughts is to get around people that are going to help you, you know, supportive, harmonious people, mastermind groups, right? We're, you know, Don, you and I are in a mastermind group together, Richard James program. And, and that is a way to help you take control of your thoughts because you're around positive people, right? right. Positive people. The other thing is we talked about affirmations and affirmations, right? Forming the questions, right? Why do I find it so easy to become debt free? That question, right. why does my debt go down every month? When you start asking it like that, instead of beating yourself up, you start to find answers and you start to change that thinking. That's really the biggest thing is one, you make a decision and you take over your thoughts. And when you do that, the brain is set up, you know, there's actually a piece of the brain called the reticular activating system that lets things into your conscious mind and it's gonna start looking for, for things to answer those questions, to fulfill those positive thoughts and you're gonna start to find things. And again, what you think about, you bring about. You have to take action. You gotta right. start bringing that stuff about. And as you start to do that, you know, as your brain kicks in, if you're listening to this podcast now and you decide to read Think and Grow Rich or, you know, you decide to set up some affirmations, right? Taking that action, that pulls you in that direction, pulls you out of the bad thoughts. The solution to pollution is dilution. And soon you're out of it and you're riding your way to that fresh start and that financial life of your dreams. I love it. Thank you. I want to share with you, Blaine, I, I think I have told you this before, but I want to share with my listeners too, that the lock screen technique is fantastic. And it definitely had an impact on myself. It uh, kept me on track. I had a goal. I wanted to uh, not be as involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the law firm. I wanted to manage the law firm, focus on managing the firm and being uh, more of a business manager instead of a day-to-day -day attorney. Even though I love it, I still love being an attorney, but I have wanted to develop a little bit more personally. And to do that, I wanted to focus on the business side of the practice. And I made that my goal and I wrote it on the lock screen or I put that on the lock screen that I wanted to replace myself in the consult room. Basically, I wanted to stop doing consultations. It took me a while, but after looking at that screen for probably a year, I did it, you know, and I was able to replace myself in that role. And that has freed me up to do other things like this. I, I would never would have had the time to do something like this if I hadn't taken that step use the lock screen technique really to help me get to my goal of replacing myself in the in the uh, consult room. So oh, that, that's huge. Congratulations. I mean, that, that's huge to replace yourself. You know, you, you went from working, you know, in the business to really being the business owner, right? Where the business can run without you on a daily basis. That's huge. And now look at all the time you have to affect more lives and to, you know, bring about more things that that are on your heart to bring about. That's awesome. Absolutely. And I just want to thank you for introducing me to, to that. Well, well, thanks. I uh, appreciate it. I, I always wanted to do a TED Talk, but I was scared of it. And, yeah. you know, I really think that, you know, I prayed about it and I'm not a real, I don't share my personal stories very much with people. Uh -huh. And so, but when I went to do that talk, they said, oh, you're gonna have to talk about something emotional. I'm like, oh, I don't do that. And they're like, well, you're gonna have to. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I talked about my dad's passing. Anyway, I, I think it was, had some divine intervention there, but, but it did work out well. And yeah, and changing that unlock screen on the phone starting there, I mean, just that simple step, if you take away one thing, just put a picture of what you're, you want to bring about in your life on that phone and you're going to see it, you know, a hundred times a day. It's, it's right. going to have an impact. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it did on my, on my life. You talked about another thing that I want to talk a little bit more about now, and that's the $10,000 hour. Can you explain that a little bit? Because that seems a little bit strange and foreign to, to me. It, at least it did. I, I kind of understand it now, but what's the $10,000 hour? The concept behind the $10,000 hour is for you to have where, where, you, where you spend an hour of your time and the value of that hour is $10,000. Now, 
you know, some people, you can go through some calculations about how much money you earn on a monthly basis. And there's about 200 hours in a month. And you can figure out what is your value of time worth. And once you realize maybe what your value of your time is worth, you can realize things you should stop doing, right? That you should, if your value of your time is, is $50 an hour, you shouldn't be doing $10 or, or $20 an hour tasks. But the bigger picture, so, so it's good exercise from there. The bigger picture is to realize that the way you spend your time, especially in regards to your business, the time is not equal. There are things that are of tremendously high value. And if you'll do those things, then, you know, they could produce a high result. So for example, you know, but if you had a, let, let's say that you had clients and the client was worth $2,000 for you. And if you could close five of them in an hour, that would be a $10,000 hour. You brought in $10,000 in value during that hour. So that, that's one example. But another example could come from you doing something that provides you with that $10,000 hour over time. Like for example, in my own case, I was doing some reporting for a client and I would take me two or three hours a week to do it, but it wasn't the best use of my time. So I spent six hours training somebody else to do it, but I recorded it on Zoom. So I made a little training guide that that person took care of. And so then after spending those six hours, I didn't have to do that task anymore. And actually that person who I trained doesn't even work for me anymore, but two other people that she trained to do the task through the Zoom call are, are now doing that task. But if I, I add up, those two or three hours a week. And now it's been three years, right. three years of that two to three hours a week, no matter what value I put on my time, you know, it's more than the $10,000 hour. So, so that's a concept. And I, I know, I think you've had some $10,000 hours. So, so maybe we can talk a little bit about it, but we can talk about where they come from. But what's your impression of that? The thing that I had to wrap my head around and I didn't understand it first, you know, cause you, you hear the word $10,000 hour and it's just unfathomable, you know, even, even for a lawyer, you know what I mean? We, we don't make $10,000 an hour, but when you take into consideration the time factor, as you brought it up, you know, the, the amount of time that you save yourself and the, the things that you can do with that time to earn money, you know, to get to that $10,000, that kind of brings it into focus. You know, I knew we were going to talk about the $10,000 hour today. So I wanted to try to come up with an example for, you know, a consumer or everybody, anybody that might be out there listening. So I wanted to run this by you and see if you think that this fits, fits the bill. In this example, the consumer would spend an hour. And I don't even think it would take an hour, to be honest with you. It may take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but let's just say an hour to review their budget or if they don't have one to do a budget. And they find $100 a month in excess that they could save, you know, it, that they're wasting or something like that, that they could use to, uh, to put into a, I don't know, something like an S&P 500 index fund. So I did a little research and it appears that the, uh, since its inception, the S&P 500 has about a 10% annual rate of return. So if they invested that $100 every month, eventually they would get to 10,000. And, and the, the number really is six years. In six years, they'd have $10,000 just from spending an hour going over their budget to find that excess $100 a month. Does that kind of fit that $10,000 hour scenario? Yeah, right through the uprights. I mean, that, that's, <laughs> a, that's a perfect one. And, and I remember one of the first $10,000 hours my wife and I ever had was we just went through the credit card statements, both mm. personal and business. We went through burst of personal and business and we had close to $400 a month of stuff that we could get rid of, right? Wow. So it was some stuff we didn't remember we were paying for and some we were on some, some software packages that we didn't need anymore. And it was just really eye-opening to see that. So, so that is a great one, reviewing your budgets or reviewing your credit card statements or bank statements. That's a huge one. And, and realize, you know, anything that can save you that money over time, like delegating, right? Delegating is huge. Price elevation. Price elevation is, is a huge one. If you own a business, that's one of the standard ones is you spend an hour figuring out how you could elevate your prices and that tends to be way more than kind of a, a $10,000 hour. But just realizing from a consumer standpoint, you know, just realize that all your, the way you spend your time, you know, everything's not equal, right? And so really on a weekly basis, I try to have a couple $10,000 hours where I'm really focused in, I shut the outside world down and I'm really looking at in my life, right? What's the most important thing to do, right? And, and sometimes that might be just with my family. Like, what's the most important thing I could do for my family this week? Me spending some time on that, that's gonna be, you know, maybe end up being priceless for me, but, but definitely it, it's of high value. That's the other cool thing about Yteba is it, it isn't just about money or finances or business. 
I mean, you can use this for your personal relationships, right? I mean, and that's kind of what you're talking about there, right? You, Yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, you can use all this stuff we're talking about can be used in your personal life. You know, the book Think and Grow Rich, you know, it does focus in on money. But in the beginning, he says, look, we're talking about riches of any kind, mm-hmm. harmonious relationships, family, everything in your life can be improved, right? It's like the, the rising tide that lifts all the boats. When you start to work on yourself, all this stuff gets better, right? And if you're thinking about, you know, what you think about, you bring about. So if you're thinking about, let's say your spouse, and right. you're thinking about all the bad things that they've done and, and the times they've let you down and all that, that's what's going to expand. If you start to think about the good times and the good things they've done and put it into an affirmation, you know, why do I love my spouse so much? Because now you start answering that same, mm. that same question, because this, because that, and you start to discount, the negative stuff is always there. Right. But what you focus on expands. You know, what you think about, you bring about. You got to shift that and you got to start looking at the positive side of things. What's funny is the events don't matter. The meaning you place on the events is what matters, right? So like today, if you say, I'm going to have the worst day of my life and you're almost hit by a car, you say, see, I told you, Blaine, this is the worst day of my life. I was almost hit by that car. But the same thing, if you wake up and say, this is going to be the greatest day of my life and then you're almost hit by the car, you can say, look, I was spared this is the greatest day of my life. I, right. I was almost killed, but I wasn't. It's thing all about is, perspective. Thing, right, it's all about the meaning you place on it, right? Mm-hmm. The meaning that you place on that makes all the difference. So when you start thinking about what you want and where you want to go and you start taking action on that, and again, you keep the high volume of positivity a- a- around that and the, with the affirmation, give your brain a chance to answer those questions, you're going to find a, a-, a big difference. And it-, it-, it truly is what you think about, you bring about. Absolutely. I've had people in my life tell me regularly that they, if, there was, if there was no such thing as bad luck, they'd have no luck at all. And they have all kinds of examples for that, you know? So it sounds to me like they just need to change their way of thinking a little bit and start thinking a little bit more positively and turn that around. You got to take that first step, you know, get some clarity, get yourself into a positive environment and start asking yourself kind of those empowering affirmation, you know, style questions so that you can start to get out of that and realize wherever you are, Okay, your thoughts and the meanings you place on those thoughts, that, that's what puts you there. Right. But realize that that's also where you learn the most, right? I mean, the harder your life's been, the more opportunity you've had to learn. I was coaching, I, I know you've got a son that plays hockey, yeah. and, and I was coaching my kids in tennis. And I realized that if they won all the time, they learn nothing, mm-hmm. right? So when my son and daughter are out there and they won like five, six, seven matches in a row, they're not learning anything. And I realized that they had to lose to learn. I realized the optimum ratio was 70%. If they were losing about 30% of the time, they were learning. Now, if they started losing 40%, 50% of the time, then they wanted to quit tennis, right? So that was bad. But there's this optimal ratio there of winning to losing. But the losing, that's where you learn. And if you've had a tough life and you, you've had a hard financial situation, now's the time to turn that around. But you've learned a lot. You've been to a spot that maybe many people haven't got to. You, and from there, you have a unique perspective. You have a unique voice you know, for other people around that. And that can be your springboard, right? So the bad stuff can be that springboard into something, you know, much greater. I mean, I, I never thought that my father's story could end up, you know, being something that could help other people. My dad died of sudden death heart attack and his dad died when he was only 12. And my brother died of sudden death heart attack. So I'm watching my health real careful here, but I never thought that that could turn into something. I didn't think that, that, that the pain, when I was going through the pain, I didn't think it could ever turn into something better. But I didn't get bitter, I got better. Right. That, that made a big difference. That was an important point you made in the, in the TEDx talk, actually. It was powerful. You know, Blaine, you've given us so much to think about today. I think this is probably a good place to, to end on. Where can uh, folks learn more about your business and what you do? Probably the easiest thing is, I'm on LinkedIn, Blaine Elkers, B-L-A-I-N-E-O-E-L-K-E-R-S. That's one, one spot. I do also have different reports to give away. If you're interested in like those $10,000 hours, there's my10khour.com. So M-Y, the number one, the number zero, K, hour.com. And then if you're interested more in the clarity piece, I've got a website, forcedclarity.com. And so you get a little report there. And that talks about the mind dumping, making that clarifying decision, and really then starting to see the future in a positive way. So forcedclarity.com. Those would probably be the best ways to, to get in touch with me. We'll definitely put all those uh, links in the show notes for the podcast. You won't have to go searching through your uh, search engines or anything. We'll have a link right there, in the, right there in the show notes. So once again, Blaine, thank you so much. You were great. 
Couldn't have asked for a better first interview. Maybe we'll do this again someday when we have some other t- interesting topic to add. Uh, happy to do it anytime, Don. And, and really, congratulations to you for, you know, taking your thoughts, you know, turning them into reality. I mean, this is a, this is a big thing. And, and the thing I love about what you just created in this podcast, and even in the Fresh Start program, all the things you're doing are so helpful for people that there are people that are not even yet born mm-hmm. that are going to benefit from this, right? There's going to be, someone's going to be listening to this podcast out in the future. Maybe they're living on Mars at that time, whatever, but it's going to have value for them, right? So wow. you're providing value way beyond just our own kids, our own lifetime, but you're creating stuff that can live forever. And that's powerful. And, and I hope people will use this to get a fresh start. Well, I appreciate it, Blaine. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. You know, as Blaine mentioned, he and I are in a mastermind group together. He's actually the chief results officer of this mastermind group. So he's kind of in charge of making sure that all the members get things done. And as the chief results officer, he uh, usually makes at least two presentations to us each quarter at our meetings. I've had the opportunity to listen to Blaine speak on these subjects many times, but every single time I hear him speak or have a chance to talk to him, I get something out of it. Sometimes it's something a little different, or sometimes it just reinforces something that I've already learned from him before. So I just want to go over the two big takeaways that I have from today. You probably have your own takeaways. I hope you do, and I hope you take some time to reflect on them. But I just want to talk to you real quickly about the two big things that I am taking away from today's interview. The first one is you really have to know what it is your heart desires. So It's not enough just to think you might want something. You actually have to, in my opinion, you have to sit down and think about it. Make it real for yourself. Spend that time doing the mind dumping or whatever it is that, whatever technique Blaine talked to you about today that is going to work for you. But really sit down and reflect on what it is you really want out of your life, whether it be financial, personal, anything. It could be anything that you want out of life. Just start thinking about that. Figure out what it is you want. Make that a hard determination, write it down, make it the lock screen on your phone, whatever it is to keep that fresh in your mind. But just take that time to figure out what it is you really want out of life. And then the next thing is just start acting. You know, once you figure out what it is you want, don't let fear or doubt creep into your mind. It's going to happen. Those things are going to happen to you. You're going to have fear. You're going to have doubt. But just start acting on it. Start acting and start working towards your goal. And I think you'll find that once you start acting, you'll just keep going and you'll push that fear and doubt out of your mind. Maybe not completely, but as you keep moving forward, you'll find that it goes further and further away. It's further and further out of your mind. Those were the two big things that I took away from today. You know, like I said, hopefully you also had some takeaways and I hope that you got a lot out of this podcast. So if you did enjoy the podcast, I'm going to ask that you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Actually, even if you didn't really love it, but you want to help me out, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. You see, the more subscribers we have, the better the search engines like iTunes will rate our show. The better our show is rated, the more chance it is that people will find us when they're doing searches for shows they may want to listen to. And the more people that have a chance to find our show on things like iTunes, the more likely it is they're going to hear our message I really think we have an important message, and I do believe that it's my mission to help people overcome financial difficulties and live the financial life of their dreams. So if you could help me out and subscribe to the podcast, I'd really appreciate it. And we will talk to you next episode.